Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so Dietmar was unable to attend today, so I'll be filling in for him. Uh, my name is John Cannon. Uh, I'm a developer on Gplates, and I'll be going through Gplates uh, in the context of mineral exploration today. Okay, so so Gplates uh, is used to model and visualize plate tectonics. Uh, and you, you can see on the picture on the right there, you can, there's surface and there's deep earth uh, things to visualize. So you can see Australia in white at the surface and below you can see the mantle uh, as basically as a 3D temperature field. And there's velocities arrows on the surface, which basically uh, show what the plate velocity is of as the plates separate from each other and converge. And these are used as constraints in geodynamic software, surface constraints. So the software is cross-platform, runs on Windows, Mac OS Linux, and open source. Uh, and we also have, so Gplates is, is the desktop program with the user interface. Uh, you can see on the video there, it's uh, reconstructing the geological map uh, of the world. Uh, PyG Plates is a Python library uh, uh, that basically just gives you more fine grain access uh, to Gplates functionality. Um, so what can PyG Plates do? Well, essentially uh, it can reconstruct geometries and plate boundaries. So here in that uh, video, each color represents a different plate. So these are all the different plates uh, as they're reconstructing through time from about 140 million years ago to present day. And so PyG plates can be used for this and we'll see in a moment, it can be used to calculate uh, convergence rates at, at boundaries as, as boundaries, as two plates converge, <laughs> you can calculate the convergence rate. Uh, and track proximity of things to those uh, plate boundaries. Essentially, these are the building blocks uh, uh, being able to do spatial temporal data analysis. So here we have a convergent plate boundary. There's an ocean plate that's going down underneath a continental plate. Uh, and as it goes down, uh, it basically, there's some of the, the water uh, picks up in the mantle is heated up and through volcanic activity rises to the surface and you can get core deposit, uh, copper deposits in this situation. So the idea with um, this particular workflow is to try to predict what characteristics of the downgoing plate uh, will, will uh, likely contribute to copper deposits. So you can detect, predict when and where they're going to happen. So here in, is just a picture uh, in Gplates of the subduction convergence. It's just a plot. You've got the different plate boundaries in different colors, different plates in different colors, and you've got the continent areas in gray, and then you can see just the different convergent velocities along there, particularly on South America there, you can see that's where the ocean plate on the left is going underneath the Andes, and you'll get copper deposits along those areas. Um, so the idea here is you can see in that video there that the uh, South America and the, the bright sort of red and orange and green colors is the ocean plate uh, going underneath the uh, South America, underneath the Andes, and the little purple dots are the copper deposits forming along, along the Andes. And you can see in the graph on the right, there's just showing where some copper deposits have formed and when they were actually formed, what how long ago they were formed, and roughly where they are along the the trench. 
Uh, so the idea is to basically um, work out what parameters um, are of key importance. And these are ultra fast plate convergence rates is important. And also a, a convergence that's not head on, that's a bit more oblique is important. Uh, also relatively old age uh, of the ocean crust and um, thick sediments on the, on, on the downgoing plate. And also um, if there's large volumes of, of calcium carbonates being going down, being subducted. Um, and basically the location along the trench it's, tends to happen more in the middle. Um, so on the right there, you can see there's a map of the probability of the ore deposits. Um, so the red is more likely and the blue is not as likely um, based, based on those parameters. So this is a, a, a prediction of where you would find these copper deposits. Um, okay, now here, the video playing here uh, shows the latest clay tectonic model we have going back a billion years. Um, and there's two different supercontinents formed. One is Rodinia, uh, which is the first one that's formed. And then that breaks up again and another continent, supercontinent forms around 300 million years ago called Pangaea. Um, so the, the, the continents are in gray and the white areas are the oceans. Um, and the colored arrows basically show this, the speed and direction of plate movement. Um, so the, the plate boundaries are the thin blue lines. And there's also, uh, you can see along here, these, there are thicker blue lines with little triangles on them. This is where the seduction happens. And uh, this is basically where all the action happens. And these are places where we expect uh, intense volcanism and, and crustal faulting to occur, uh, which leads to these deposits. So you can see all the, the dots, you've got the different dots of the other ore deposits. So you've got a lot of dots here, which were formed within the last 100 million years or so. And um, the purple ones are older ones and green are in, not as old. So you get a lot of formation here along the North and South American margins. Um, so yeah, so two plates is um, developed in the Earth Bike Group at the University of Sydney and is funded by Oscope. There's also the G-Plates web portal, uh, which has got a 3D visualization. So you can go there and see 3D globe views of different research data. Uh, it also has a web service, so you can give it your web, your, your data that you want to reconstruct your points, for example, and it'll reconstruct it to past geological times. So uh, yeah, so that's the end of it.